Luargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics and Hobby King. Today we're going to discuss something I've been hesitant to, go, to discuss, which is uh, flying and landing, taking off and landing a turbine jet, or this even will apply to EDF jets. But today we're going to take a look at why we see so many bad landings with turbines. The principal reason that I did this is friends of mine and people around me all the time are making really bad, really fast, bouncy landings and basically ruining their jets, you know, taking out the gear, um, uh, nosing and rolling over. And it's all based on things that we can avoid. It's all a matter of setup. How this plane is set up before it lands is why I never have any trouble landing this aircraft. It's, it's not miraculous skill or anything like that. It's just that when I come around on base and I start making my final turn, the plane is nice and slow and it's not really high. Um, altitude will result in airspeed. It translates into airspeed and picks up the speed of the aircraft. And by, if you're too high coming over the runway, the plane will just not slow down and you'll be forced to put it down before the plane is actually ready. I've done tips on landing and it, it all kind of applies, but jets are a little different. They have so much residual power going in. So the tendency is to bring them in fast. I have very good friends that are really good pilots that for some reason uh, it's very hard for them to, to uh, watch that plane slow down because they're afraid it's going to stall. But most of the jets today are built very light and they don't really have that slow a stall speed. Uh, I've heard a thousand times people saying, I got to bring it in hot, got to bring it in hot. And I think that has caused more accidents on landing than anything I can think of. The bottom line is, Today I'm going to show you, you know, a really nice way to take off. It's, you know, pretty standard and I'll give you a few tips on, on flying them to make your flying look a little better. But the big purpose of this video is landing your jet. So let's take a look at what we're talking about. First thing about. that we're always going to do is use a lot of the runway. It's pointless to, you know, risk the plane not actually leaving the ground before the runway ends. We're going to try and let the plane lift itself off and just gently urge it off the ground. I have a uh, first level of flaps in and it's going to help the plane just get up really, really nice and not be jerked into the sky. So here we go. Now rule number one for me is always the same and that is we want to fly our jets nice and smooth. Very predictable turns, predictable everything. Make it look nice and smooth. That's what makes every part of a jet flight look good. So, you know, another key to flying jets are big maneuvers, uh, you know, big sky, nice and slow. Make it look good. Make it look elegant. Uh, no matter what maneuver I'm trying to do, whether I'm going to do a nice inverted pass or a knife edge pass, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm trying to set up in the same places. Obviously, for some reason, my gear is stuck down, so I'm stuck flying this flight with the, with the gear down the entire time. But that was just a regular pass, and this time if I'm going to, let's say, uh, fly a knife edge pass or something like that, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm flying the same lines, nice broad turn, making everything look nice. And as I'm coming down the runway, I'm accelerating, I'm going to rotate the aircraft. Fly straight in, straight out. Make everything look nice and deliberate. But we're talking about landing today, and what we're going to do is I'm going to give you an idea of what I'm shooting for. I guess it's hard to tell on video just how high this aircraft is. But on my final approach, right as I get here, I'm going to drop the gear. Make sure the gear are down and locked. So this is my gear pass, and I'll leave it up this high and start to slow down. You notice the plane isn't going very fast. Next phase, I'm going to add my half flaps to begin slowing the aircraft down. I'm not adding full flaps until I turn on base. 
Now, as you can see, I'm not very high, and I'm going to make a long, fairly low approach. Right here is the key. That's the magic spot. I'm relatively slow and not so high. I'm going to position the plane about 10, 15 feet off the ground, no more, eventually. And now is when I'm going to cut my throttle and come down. Now, I'm not going to land this time. We're going to do it again. Still have some fuel to bring off. A, a major tip here is if you come in and you see the plane is fast, don't start playing games with it and thinking, yeah, yeah, maybe I can. Just go around. There I am again in a really, really good place. I'm far away, nice long approach, and look at where I'm sitting right now. If I hit full flaps right now, this plane will come down like a baby. It will be beautiful. See how nice it's coming in? I've given this advice before, and the advice is to watch the nose of the airplane and point it at you when you're coming in rather than trying to line up straight with the runway. Um, a lot of people have written to me or talked to me in person saying it's the best tip they ever had. And if you look directly over my shoulder, here's what I'm talking about. This will be a nose at you approach. See, I'm coming a little different angle this time, but watch, the nose is right at me. Now I can see I'm nice and low. I'm just gonna tip it towards the runway. And as you can see, I'm dead center. And beautiful shape. Okay, we're gonna land this time. My last big tip is to not land when the plane's too flat fast. So what that means is I'm gonna hold the plane off the ground until it is absolutely positively ready to land itself. I'm not very high, so I have to rely on the engine here, so I'm coming around. I've definitely not cut the throttle yet. I just entered full flaps. Now, you can see my height is very good. Everything is just about perfect here. I'm gonna let it drop into the runway a little bit. I still have a little power. I'm cutting the power now because I'm plenty over the runway. And as I get lower, I'm gonna flare and keep it off the ground as long as possible. And you literally can't touch down any softer. And that's because the plane was slow. Okay, in contrast, you can see here how much higher and steeper and shorter I'm coming in with the very same aircraft. Now, obviously, I have way more speed. I'm uh, slowing down okay, but as you can see, I have to make a, a pretty long landing and risk running off the runway, even with this plane. The bottom line is all of this altitude ends up resulting in increased speed, and that's what makes me go long on the runway. Sure, more often than not, you can pull off the landing. But in most cases, a long, smooth landing like this one is really where it's at, so. and it's so much more controllable and so much less risk to the aircraft. Watch this landing again, nice and long and low and slow, and even without a gyro, a lot of rocking and a little bit of crosswind, it's still a very nice, yeah. smooth landing. Again, the key to this is a nice, long, slow and low approach. Even with the heavy wind and everything like that, you can nicely control it and it still lands less than halfway down the runway and everything is safe. Again, this is not about talent. This is about hitting your marks. And if you don't hit your marks, you should go around because even though you can save a landing from many positions, ultimately it is best to not try to salvage a bad approach or a bad setup. The bottom line is put your plane in the position that you want it. And if you're not in that position, go around unless it's not compromised very much because of course it's impossible to hit your position every single time. Here's my swordfish with a little bit higher than I wanted, but you can see if I miss the mark by a little bit, it's still a nice pretty landing and nice and slow. These rules also stand for uh, scale and planes that are a little bit heavier and fly a little differently. Watch how nice and smooth and low 
just letting this plane take off without jerking the elevator off the ground, how pretty it looks as opposed to the opposite. This was a maiden flight, but as you can see, I still came in fairly low, nice and slow, and held it off until it was ready to land, even though it's a jet that normally would want to be landed a little faster. And of course, this is a bit of how not to do it. Watch it being jerked off the ground and how it just doesn't look as nice. Look at how it, the elevator takes over. And here, of course, is how not to do a landing. Look how high we are here compared to all of the other ones. The result is, of course, a very long landing. It's not that we can't pull it off because you can see the plane ended up sitting. But this was just not really the way we want to land an aircraft because one out of every 10 times, it's a disaster. Nice. Right here is one of my best examples of you know jet pilots and why bringing the plane in slow is a bit counterintuitive. Now Tom is one of the best pilots I know, great 3D pilot, great jet pilot, and also flies triple sevens internationally. So he's very familiar with turbine operations and how a jet works. But the bottom line is, through his entire jet career, which I've been there from most every flight that he's made. Uh, for at least the first year, was he has a difficult time wanting to slow this aircraft down, um, any of his jets. It was always me standing over his shoulder saying, a little lower, a little lower, because I guess really being afraid the plane is going to stall and hearing everybody for years and years and years saying, you got to bring him in hot, you got to bring him in hot, you got to bring him in hot. Well, the truth is they have to be slow. And if they're low and relatively slow, they will slow down and just give up flying. So you do not have to force the aircraft down. Nice long approach. He's bringing the altitude down a little bit. Now this point should be leveling off. As you can see here, he's sitting just perfectly. He's slowing down and has a good altitude. In closing, letting the plane stay on the ground to make sure it just lifts itself off is very safe and looks beautiful. And landing, starting nice and low, you can see how nice and smooth and even on a short runway can be done very effectively. And as you can see here, where this plane is, where it's sitting before the runway, it's only five feet off the ground. And that's really where you want to be because it just guarantees that you have plenty of time to hold it off and let the plane land itself. We discussed many times how not to let the plane hit the ground until it's ready. I want you to watch this clip again and I want you to notice that right here this plane is ready to land if I wanted it to. I can put this plane down right here and it would stay on the ground. But watch as I hold it off just a little longer. Watch how much smoother and nicer the landing is. Perhaps so. Here are two different ones in split screen and you can definitely see the difference here. But I have to tell you that, you know, you can really salvage landings from just about anywhere and have bad landings. But ultimately, enjoying jets is a matter of keeping them safe. They're very expensive and landing them properly is really critical to making sure that you keep these models for many, many years. Look at the skies again.